Hey gang, LinkedIn is number one in B2B display advertising in the U.S. And using LinkedIn advertising gives you a great advantage. You can stand out against your competitors while nurturing customer relationships and growing your brand. LinkedIn's targeting tools allow you to reach your precise audience down to their job title, company name, location, and more. That means your ads are being seen by those who matter. Scale your marketing, grow your business with LinkedIn advertising. As a thank you to their customers for helping them grow three times faster than the competition and just for listening to Winfluence, LinkedIn is offering a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash Winfluence. That's right. LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence just for you to claim that credit. LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence. A hundred bucks in free ads? I'm down. On this episode of Winfluence, the metrics you should ask for are the ones you actually care about and the ones you plan to measure when you first engage them. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls, and in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. At the end of this show each week, I invite you to ask me a question or present an influence marketing problem you might have and either email me about it or even better, email me a voice recording so I can actually drop you asking it here on the show. So far, I haven't had a whole lot of takers and that's fine, though I will send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book if I use your question on the show. And no, my ego isn't so sensitive that you can't ask me to not sign it I am happy to just send you one not adulterated with my pithy quote and signature if you like. But the reason I do that is because this show becomes much more useful to you if I'm answering your questions. Well, one of my old social media pals asked me a question about influence marketing of sorts last week on Twitter. Sheila Scarborough and Leslie McClellan run Tourism Currents. It's a blog and resource with accompanying social channels for destination marketers, tourism bloggers and journalists, and those who fancy themselves influencers in the travel and tourism space. I've been pals with Sheila and the other founder of the site, Becky McRae, for probably 15 years or so. I don't know Leslie as well, but I love the content and advice they all dole out to folks in that niche. Last week, they tagged me on Twitter to see what I thought about an article they published called Ask for These Influencer Campaign Stats. It was advice for destinations, brands in the tourism industry like convention and visitors bureaus, hotels, attractions, and such, on what metrics they should ask influencers to provide them for a campaign to judge how effective their content is for your efforts. Without having to look at the article, I certainly know Sheila and Leslie well enough to know it's going to be sound advice, and it was. But it doesn't just apply to destinations. Their advice is sound for all brands and agencies to hear, to know what metrics you should care about from the influence partners and content creators you work with. Today on Winfluence, I'll share Tourism Current's list and add both some items and some perspective of my own to help your brand. That's coming up on Winfluence. Before we get to that, I want to touch on two fantastic supporters of the show today. You have heard me talk almost every episode about Tagger for quite some time. That's because they are our presenting sponsor. Tagger is a complete influencer marketing software solution. With it, you can find, prioritize, connect, and collaborate with, measure, and even pay the content creators you use for your influencer programs. I could go on, but you know I use it. You know I trust it. You should check it out, too. It might be right for your brand or agency. Go to jason.online slash tagger to get a free demo. Just check it out for free to see if tagger is right for you. That's jason.online slash tagger. And you may have heard me talking about LinkedIn before the show or maybe during the breaks on the show lately. That's because LinkedIn has partnered with me to offer you a $100 advertising credit to get your message in front of the right kind of decision makers. I use LinkedIn advertising to target leads based on job descriptions, company seniority, industries, and more. What that means is I'm not wasting advertising spend getting my message in front of people who are not my ideal customers. You can too. LinkedIn is offering you, listeners of Winfluence, you get a $100 ad credit just for listening to this show. Go to linkedin.com slash Winfluence today. That's right, linkedin.com slash Winfluence. 100 bucks in free ad credits? Uh, yes, please. 
linkedin.com slash winfluence. Some great advice on what metrics to ask for from your influence partners. The take from Tourism Currents, with my commentary to boot, is next on Winfluence. Support for Winfluence and all the shows on the Marketing Podcast Network is provided by Storyblock. There's no better way to future-proof your business than switch to a headless content management system. That means one place to update all your digital content. 82% of those who have switched to a headless CMS like Storyblock report better productivity, efficiency, and revenue. Sign up for a free account to test and see for yourself at storyblock.com slash winfluence. That's storyblock without the C dot com slash winfluence. This year's NBA playoffs are going to feature a lot of great rookies. And FanDuel wants you to be one of them. Make your debut on FanDuel Sportsbook with promo code ROOKIE. And your first bet is risk-free up to 1000 bucks. So you can bet the point spread, grab the money line, or build a same-game parlay. And if you make a rookie mistake, FanDuel will give you up to $1,000 back in site credit. So you can take another shot. Okay, this guy's got potential. Make every moment more with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Sign up and unlock your risk-free first bet up to $1,000. We're looking forward to seeing what you're made of. 21 plus in President, Virginia. First online real money wager only. Refund issued as non-withdrawable site credit that expires in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. So last week, I'm scrolling along Twitter when the Tourism Currents account tags me. Sheila Scarborough and Leslie McClellan there are longtime friends and connections. They've offered up an article on TourismCurrents.com advising travel and tourism brands of what influence marketing metrics they should ask for from the influencers they engage. I'm certainly linking to the article in the show notes and highly recommend you go read it for yourself. It's great advice and not just for travel and tourism brands, but for any business. Here are some highlights, and then I want to share some context and commentary with you about what they wrote. First, I love they start with blog post stats. I personally think blog posts are the most underutilized and undervalued type of influencer content out there. Because so much of influencer marketing happens on and with regard to the social networks, we've forgotten about the power of SEO and backlinks and long-form content that is more readily consumed by the creator's core audience. We've migrated to a short attention span marketplace, and who has time for blogs? Well, brands that know ranking well in search means acquiring those customers proactively looking for you or a solution like you. Those brands have plenty of time for blogs. Travel is an industry where the buyer does a lot of searching, a lot of research. There's longer lead time to make decisions to book, so blogs are thankfully still very relevant there. I could go on about how ignorant it is to fish on social networks where people are not looking for products or services rather than play in search engine results where they are, but I'll reserve that for another episode. The article on Tourism Currents says you should ask for how many users came to the blog post or article, where the referral traffic to that article came from, and whether or not the influencer shared it with their email newsletter or with their email list, and if they did, the corresponding open and click-through rates. They also point out you can see inbound traffic to your website from that article in your own website analytics. That's a pretty complete list of metrics to look for from a single blog post. From that, I can tell how many people in the influencer's audience saw the content, how many clicked through to my website or links that I asked them to include, how effective their own promotion of that article was, which is an interesting factor to know, and what kind of added value I may have received from an email share. That's a lot more than I can get from any social media platform's insights, especially if I'm using the creator to drive sales or conversions. All right, I'll get off my soapbox about blogs. For Facebook, Tourism Currents reminds you to get analytics from both a personal Facebook post and one on a brand page. Many influencers do post on both. You want post reach, comments, likes, shares, click-throughs if it's a link post. They also say to ask for minutes viewed and engagement on videos. The article then goes into detail on Instagram, smartly reminding brands to ensure they use the branded content connection with the creators there. That not only takes care of your disclosure issues, but the brand connection element allows that influencer's content to appear in your feed as well as theirs. Now, I'll add a caveat here. 
I have found that there's a difference between the branded content connection and using the paid partnership label. You can't do both. And the only one that allows your content to include the influencer's content on your stream is the branded content connection. So opt for the branded content one. It's more powerful for you. On Instagram, Tourism Currents recommends post reach, impressions from hashtags, content interactions and saves. Instagram stories is a good one to think about because the analytics there are harder to capture. You should ask for reach and interactions, how much drop off from the first panel to the last might be for multiple panels, clicks from stickers added, or whether or not the influencer is saving the story to their highlights. For reels, they recommend plays, interactions, and saves, whether or not it was also posted on Facebook and what those results were there as well. LinkedIn is similar, post impressions, reaction shares, engagement rate and percentage if they're posting on a brand page versus an individual profile where you can't get those statistics. Twitter advice from Tourism Currents is about impressions, engagement, engagement rate percentage, and maybe how the destination or brand-related tweets compare in popularity to the influencer's other top tweets for that month, which the creator can see when they log into their Twitter analytics. On Pinterest, they recommend pin impressions, clicks, saves, and outbound clicks. For YouTube, Tourism Current says to ask for views, average view duration, including the percentage that watch to completion, traffic sources, and where the video may have been embedded and promoted elsewhere, which is good to know. If the creator can get viewer age, gender, and geography, that's also useful for the brand. They offer up a link to other advice on TikTok, as they haven't had direct experimentation there yet. That article that they link to from Social Media Examiner talks about measuring views, hearts, shares, comments, and metrics from any branded hashtag you may incorporate. All are good things to ask for. The tourism team does offer the caveat that one-off social media influencer posts don't do much. You need longer-term sustainable relationships to actually be effective, and they're right. But the metrics they offer up are a pretty strong and comprehensive list. Here's where I would take the thinking in this article a little farther. The metrics you should ask for are the ones you actually care about and the ones you plan to measure when you first engage them. If you're trying to sell more products, then you need to ask for the metrics that indicate this influencer helped you sell more products. That could be clicks to your website, but it'll be better if it's clicks to a trackable URL where you can properly attribute what the visitor from their posts does on your website. You can measure effectively how many sales, conversions, and revenue a given influencer post drives if you plan to measure sales, conversions, and revenue from the start. If you're trying to drive awareness for your product or services, you need to ask for the metrics that indicate more people are aware of your product or service. You need to ask for impressions, reach, and then qualify the effectiveness of those by adding on the number of engagements or engagement rate, which indicates the audience member did more than just potentially see the content, they did something with it. If you're trying to change the consumer mindset about your product or company or a topic of choice, then you need to ask the influencer to hammer home those talking points so that you can survey their audience after the campaign. Compare that to the survey of the audience you did before the campaign because you're planning to measure and you'll know how you change perceptions. All of these are possible if you plan to measure to your goal. They may sound hard, but they're not. It's actually all fairly easy. Now, it might be complex and layered to build and to plan. It might take some effort, but measuring to your goal is not hard. What do we have before? Then what do we have after? The difference is the analytic you care about most. So build plans to drive that with your creators and influencers and measure to that during and after. What other metrics or analytics would you add to the list from Tourism Currents or my commentary? I'd love to know. Email me at jason at jasonfalls.com and tell me. The same policy applies. If I use your comments on a future show, I'll send you a copy of Winfluence. You can tell me whether or not you want it signed. Folks, don't forget to drop Winfluence a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. We're on them, all of them, I think. Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartMedia, Podchaser, TuneIt, Good Pods. In fact, we're not only on Good Pods, 
but they chose Winfluence last week as a team recommendation in the app. So thank you, Good Pods team. We do appreciate the support. Whatever your app or listening mode, if you are listening to us right now, and don't let this shock you, but you are, look for the stars or ratings on that app or website and tap or click and let us know how we're doing. Also, if you'd like a deep dive on influencer marketing topics every so often, subscribe to my email newsletter at jason.online slash subscribe. I send it every four to six weeks. I go deep on a topic to make your influence marketing smarter. I'm working on one this week, so go sign up so you don't miss that jason.online slash subscribe. And I'd love for you to help me make a future episode of Influence Awesome. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Send that email to jason at jasonfalls.com. If you're feeling adventurous, record a voice memo on your phone and email me that file. I'll let you ask the question right here on the show using the recording. Regardless of how you ask it, I may use your comment on a future episode or your question to inspire a show topic just like today's from Tourism Currents. If I do, I'll send you a copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you, signature optional. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter, or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening. And remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. I'm Ian Truscott here to tell you about Rockstar CMO FM. The M is the marketing and the F is the well you decide. As you wonder, does the world need another effing marketing podcast? Find out as every week I chat with friends old and new that I've met through my career from techie to CMO and share a tune, a cocktail and their marketing street knowledge. Just drop a dime into your podcast.